What's up guys? Welcome to my channel. My name is Sam and today's video is going to be my January wrap up. I think I had a pretty good reading month in January. I had some five star reads. I did some rereads, but I'm also going to call myself out because I've already failed at my 24 books that I want to read in 2024. In that video, I said that I was going to pick two books from my TBR jar and then vlog them every month. That didn't happen. I haven't read either one of those books yet. So I don't know. I think I'm probably going to end up adding them to my February TBR and hope that I get to them in February. With the release of House of Flame and Shadow, I kind of dropped the ball. So yeah, but I will read them, I promise. So I read a total of 15 books in January, which I'm really happy about. So we're just going to get started. So the first book that I read in January is a thriller and that is None of This is True by Lisa Jewell. I ended up giving this one four stars. I had such a good time while reading this. For me this one definitely lives up to the hype that it was getting when it was released. So in this book we are following Alex and Josie. Alex and Josie meet one night while they are celebrating their birthday. They are birthday twins. That's a connection that they both make but then they also realize that they were born in the same hospital. So Alex is actually a very famous podcaster and when Josie finds out about this she's like you know I think my life the story of my life and what has happened to me and then also where I'm going I think would be very compelling for your your listeners. So you know Alex she doesn't really want to but she ends up taking Josie up on this offer and things go from there. I really enjoyed the pacing of this. I liked the shorter chapters. I liked all of the reveals. This was just it was fun. It kept me on my toes and this is I believe my third Lisa Jewell book that I have read and I finally had a hit. So I'm excited now to maybe continue reading her. So this next book, I actually started it in December, but I didn't finish it until like the beginning of January. It's a reread and that is House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Mass. I was rereading House of Earth and Blood and then the second book, which I'll get to later. I like to do these in order. I don't know why it, it keeps my mind straight. So the first one that I read, obviously, because it's the first one, man, I'm struggling today five stars. I loved this even more the second time around. It so good, so good. So yeah, I I loved my reread. And then the next book is unfortunately a DNF and it was a very surprising DNF for me because I love this author. She is one of my favorite historical romance authors and I DNF this at 60-ish percent. So this is When the Earl Met His Match by Stacey Reed. I had heard such good things about this book. It was in People's Favorites of 2023 and I'm like, you know what? I need to read some historicals. Let me try this one. And mm, it just, it didn't hit the mark for me. In this book we are following Lady Phoebe and Hugh. I think I'm, I think that's his name. So Lady Phoebe, she finds herself sort of in a bind. She is in love with a man who her parents do not want her to marry. She's also compromised by this man. So she ends up pregnant and her and Hugh meet because Hugh is, is he, he's an Earl obviously, and he is looking for a wife. He needs to marry. So he puts an ad in the paper looking for a wife. Phoebe is just appalled by this. So she decides she's going to write him a letter and just let him know how she feels. So they start, you know, communicating back and forth through these letters. And when things take a turn and Phoebe needs somewhere to go, she actually ends up proposing to Hugh through these letters. And then she kind of runs off to be with him. And then they have a marriage of convenience because she's pregnant. He needs a wife. So you know, let's just get married. Let's be married. I just found this one incredibly boring. I, I don't even remember how long it took me to listen to this book. I think, I don't know, it was probably like at least two weeks that it took me to even get to 60% of this book. It just, I don't know, I felt like the plot wasn't going anywhere. I felt like the characters weren't going anywhere. The relationship wasn't going anywhere. So, I just decided to DNF it and did I make a mistake? I don't know, but yeah. 
And the next one, Cheyenne, just go ahead and like fast forward through this part because I'm sorry. I read The Fake Out by Stephanie Archer. This made Cheyenne's top books of the year. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to read it because it sounds adorable. I ended up giving this one three stars. I didn't hate it, but it definitely was not my favorite. So we're following Rory, who is our hero, and Hazel, she is our heroine. These two have kind of a past, but not a good one. They didn't really like each other. They went to the same high school. Well, Hazel didn't really like Rory for things that he did in high school to her friends. And, okay, let me not get ahead of myself. So. Rory is now a very popular, very just successful hockey player, and Hazel is a therapist, physiotherapist, I believe, for the team, physical therapist. I don't know. She works for the team, and she's just gone through a really bad, well, not even just gone through. She, her, she, her and her boyfriend broke up like a while ago, but she's still, mm, she's jaded about it, okay? She's not happy with men. But when she finds out that her ex-boyfriend is now signing to the team that she works for and the team that Rory is on, they decide that they're going to pretend that they are together. And immediately Rory is like, yeah, this is, this is not fake for me. Like, I actually have feelings for you. But the whole time Hazel's like, mm, I, this is pretend. We're just pretending. I don't like you. This isn't happening. We're not in a relationship. She drove me nuts. It took me like 40% to actually like this heroine, okay? She could not let go of the past, could not. Even to the point where she picked a fight with Rory over something that happened when they were in high school. And it didn't even happen to her. He did it to one of her friends. I couldn't, I couldn't. And then there's this whole thing where her mom is very self-conscious about her body. She does not talk you know, good about her body. And so Rory, she teaches yoga. I believe it's yoga on the side. And she goes on these like huge spiels, monologues about like how you need to speak positively about your body. And just, it, it was just very weird for me. It just felt very like thrown in there and very forced. I didn't love it, but I did love Rory, which all the three stars are for Rory because this man, I really liked him. So this one just didn't quite hit the mark for me. There were too many things that honestly, I'm probably being very nitpicky about, but I just couldn't, I couldn't get over them. So three stars. I do want to read something else by this author. Maybe I'll find another one that works for me, but yeah, this one just didn't work. And then the next book that I read is book two in a fantasy romance series. And this is A Kingdom, This Curse, and Empty. This is book two in the Kingdom of Lies series by Stasia Stark. I don't want to get too much into what this is about, but we are following Prisca and Lauren. Now, Prisca in the first book, she is running away from her kingdom because she has to. She is being hunted, and she ends up kind of teaming up with Lorien and this band of mercenaries. Things go from there, but that's just like a general gist of what this series is about. This one, I ended up giving three and a half stars. The first book I really enjoyed. I had such a good time reading that book. This one, I just felt like there wasn't a whole lot of development with the romance. Like the plot definitely was moving. We got a lot of answers in here and then the end, the cliffhanger what? I definitely need to pick up book three. I'm going to continue in the series. It's just this one. I don't know. The romance, it felt kind of flat. And what little interactions that they had, they just had sex. So didn't love this one, but I am going to continue on with the series. And the next book that I read is another thriller, and that is False Witness by Karen Slaughter. I ended up giving this one four and a half stars. This is the only thriller that I have ever read that has made me cry. Karen Slaughter, she, her writing is incredible. If you have not read a Karen Slaughter thriller, you need to, but they're very dark. So just go in with caution, check your triggers. They are very dark. So in this book, we are following two sisters, Lee and Callie. And in the beginning we get, I mean, it starts right off in the thick of it. Callie and Lee, they have to do something to 
like save their life. They make some decisions when they're very young and then the book flashes to them as they are adults and the fallout that has happened because of this event that took place in the beginning of the book and how this secret, the lies that they have told, is now coming back to haunt them. And it just, Karen Slaughter, she dives into her characters and who they are as people and the decisions that they make and what they're willing to risk. She does it so well. I have never read thrillers where you care so much about the characters as I do when I read a Karen Slaughter book. And I just, I love it. I truly love it. And then, like I said, this is the only thriller book that has ever made me cry. So I... I highly recommend this book. It it's really good. It is. It's long and it you at times you do feel the length of this book, but again, she's just a master at making you fall in love with these characters and like I know that sounds really weird because this is a thriller, but you do. You just feel so deeply for them. And even when they're making bad decisions and doing bad things, you're like I get it. I get it. So the next book that I read is One Night by Lena Hendricks. This is the fourth and final book in the Sullivan Family series. I ended up giving this one three stars. I wanted to love this book so much. It is one of my favorite tropes, the surprise pregnancy trope, but this one just, it really fell flat for me. So I gave this one three stars. We're following Duke and Sylvia. Now, the family in here, they Duke and Sylvia's family, they are rivals. They have been rivals for years. And so they start this relationship via text messages and they don't want to let it get out there that they're together because obviously their families hate each other. So they're supposed to hate each other, but she's pregnant. Now what do we do? I think the family shenanigans and the fact that she was trying to wrap up this whole feud between the two and then settle this feud really for me made the romance take a back seat in this. I don't feel like there was any like emotional depth to either one of these characters. Sylvia honestly just felt like she was there. Like she was just sort of, I, I don't, I don't know. She just felt very bland to me, like no personality at all. And then you have Duke who was just an over the top, like very sweet, but also protective. Pretty much like she's just checking every box of what a romance hero should be and what is popular right now for romance heroes. So I just, I didn't love this one and I really wanted to, but yeah. So these next three books, I actually did a reading vlog on it's a few videos back, so if you want more info, because I'm gonna kind of quickly go through these, just go watch that video. So the first one that I have is The Witch Collector by Charissa Weeks. This is book one in the Witch Walker novel series. I ended up giving this one three and a half stars. So we are following Reyna and Alexis. So in this world, the king sends the witch collector to this kingdom, to Reyna's kingdom, to every year select a witch to bring back with him. Now, Reyna's sister years ago was selected and Reyna is pissed. She wants her sister back. So she's kind of her whole life been like, you know what? I want revenge. I'm going to kill you, kill the king, kill the witch collector, kill the king, and get my sister back. But the witch collector never selects her. This year, though, when the witch collector comes, there's also another, like, kingdom that comes in. Chaos ensues, and then Reyna ends up going with the witch collector and finding out, you know, there's more to what's been going on. I really liked the premise of this story. I really liked the writing. I just felt like... I don't know. It didn't wow me. This is one of those three and a half stars where I just don't have a lot to say about it. It was just, it was there. It was a fine book. It was a fine romance. I do want to continue on in the series because I hear that book two gets even better. But yeah, this one, like, mm, I don't know. It was just okay. I wish I had more to say, but I don't. It was just fine. And then the next book that I read for that vlog was Powerless by Lauren Roberts. This is a YA fantasy that has been getting so much hype. I mean, this book has been everywhere. So I'm like, I went in on that. I went in on the hype. I want to love this book. 
but I didn't. I gave it three stars. We are following Kai and Peyton. Now in this world, you have the ordinaries and or what are they? The elites? Yes. So the ordinaries, they are powerless. And the king has, you know, sent down a decree. He's declared that all the ordinaries, you know, we're gonna... So Peyton has spent her whole life pretending that she is an elite, that she has a gift. She is a thief, a pickpocket. And one day she actually ends up running into Kai and she decides she's going to steal from him. He obviously ends up catching her and then he gets himself into a situation that Peyton gets him out of. And kind of that leads to her being sent into these trials that the elites host every year and it's kind of like a Hunger Games battle to the death like there's only one left standing and so her and Kai are in these battles together. Kai is the second son to the king. He is going to be an enforcer so he's just he's like done some very bad things because of his dad and he feels guilty about it and Peyton she she's a very like strong heroine. She's had to fight pretty much her whole life but I just found this to read a little juvenile for me and Kai, he said all the right things, did all the right things. He had so many like one-liners that you can like pick out of this book and make a TikTok about it and then it'll just blow up. That's the kind of hero he is. And yes, I know that this is YA and so the fact that I say that it's juvenile, you know, it's YA. but. I've read plenty of YA books that do not feel juvenile, and this one, it just did. Now, with that being said, did I have fun reading this book? Yes. Yes, I did. But I don't think I'm going to continue just because, I don't know, I just don't care enough. So yeah, three stars. And then the last book that I read for that vlog is When the Moon Hatched by Sarah A. Parker. This is book one in the what series are you? I know this is going to be, is it a series or a duet? I don't really know. It's the Moonfall series. I don't even know what to tell you about this book. And in that vlog, I was so conflicted on how to rate this book. I believe, I believe I'm going to give it five stars. That is a tentative rating. I could change my mind in like a week or so. You never know with me. But I really loved the writing. I really loved the story that is set up in here. The way that dragons are used in this book is so unique. And just her her very descriptive, yes, it leans on purple prose writing. It just adds so much to the story and to this world. You, I mean, this is a long book, but you really don't feel like you're reading that long of a book because you're just so engaged, so engrossed in the story. And the reason I don't want to tell you too much about this is like, what I don't know what to tell you that's not a spoiler. Because there, there, you just got to read the book and then you'll know why. But I, I really enjoyed this and I'm very much looking forward to book two. And then the next book that I read is The Butterfly Project by Emma Scott. You guys. Emma has done it again. I gave this one four and a half stars. We are following Zelda and Beckett. Now, Zelda has moved from Vegas to New York with dreams of publishing her graphic novel that she has been working on for years, and it is just a very close and personal story to her. But she's kind of getting rejected at every turn. Things just are not going right. And at the beginning of this, she's grappling with do I want to stay in New York and tough it out and try to you know have my dream fulfilled or do I just like tuck tail and go back to Vegas well she ends up meeting Beckett at a restaurant where Beckett works one night and they hit it off right away they have a connection this very deep conversation and Zelda feels inspired she's like you know what I'm gonna stay I'm gonna do this I'm gonna see my dream through but I don't have anywhere to live. I need a place to stay because she thought she was going back to Vegas. So she gave up the room that she was living in. So she has nowhere to stay. So she goes back to the restaurant where Beckett works and says, hey, can I move in with you? And so Beckett being Beckett, he lets her. Now Beckett is such a wonderful hero. 
oh my gosh, he has done some things in the past that he is not proud of. He is an ex-convict and he is on parole. He has to meet with his parole officer every, I think it's every month, but they, they have a really good relationship and you can just tell that Beckett is, he's a good person who made a very bad decision and he knows that too. He, ugh, I could just go on and on about how much I love him because he really is like the perfect hero. And the way that him and Zelda become friends and then how they open up to each other was just absolutely beautiful. I mean, if you've read an Emma Scott book, you know her characters don't always do the right thing and they have pasts and sometimes they're not good pasts, you know, they're they're broken people, but they find home in each other. They find love and acceptance in each other. And that I just, mm, I love that so much about Emma's books. This book, read it if you haven't. This is one of her older books. When was this even published? 2017. And I'm just now reading it, which is a shame because this is really good. This, yeah, I highly, highly recommend this one. Okay, now the next book that I read, I don't want to give too much away because at this point, I don't even think that there is a blurb for it up, but that's Take My Hand by McKay Marie. This is book two in the Whisper Me Nothings series. And y'all, the only thing I'm gonna say, you guys are gonna fall in love with Hayden Coleman, okay? He is incredible. My favorite, well, I should say one of my favorite type of romance heroes. He is just, Mm. I think she's publishing this in March, but I don't entirely remember. I will definitely put it up on the screen though. We don't even have a cover reveal yet. So that's why I, like, I'm not telling you a whole lot because I don't want to give anything away. I don't want anything out there that McKay doesn't want out there yet, but y'all are going to love Hayden Coleman. Okay. Trust me. And then the next book that I read is House of Sky and Breath. This is book two in the Crescent City series. My reread with this one was kind of all over the place. Like I still loved this and I'm standing by my five star review. But when I was reading it, I was like, man, this is really slow. The pacing in here is really weird. And I was questioning like, why did I give this five stars? What is happening here? But then I got to the end and I'm like, yeah. Yeah, so I stand by it. I love this so much. Not as much as book one, but the end, the end. Yeah, that's all I'm gonna say about that one because mm. the next book that I read is The Summer You Found Me by Elizabeth O'Rourke. This is book three in the summer series. We are following Kate and Beck. So I've heard some discourse about whether or not you should read book two before reading this one. And I'm gonna go ahead and say, yes, you should probably read book two before this one. Do I think it's absolutely necessary? No, but I think it will add to the story, especially Kate's character in the beginning, because she's very, she's angry. She's very angry. So Kate is recently out of rehab and she's back in her hometown trying to win back her husband, who her husband, his book is the second book. So you get a lot of their relationship, the downfall and what happened and what has been going on with Kate in that book. And so in this one, she's finally back home and she is, she wants her marriage back. She wants her life back. But her, her husband, soon to be ex-husband is like, nope, we're not doing this. I have moved on. So Kate, she doesn't really know what to do. She doesn't have a job. She has nothing. So she ends up staying with Beck, who is her husband's ex-husband's best friend. There were kind of two major things about this book that kept me from loving it as much as I wanted to. I went into this thinking it was going to be so angsty and just, mm, I thought I was gonna love this as much as I loved book one, but I gave it three stars. So I think the history with Kate and Beck needed to be fleshed out a little bit more because we're told that they had just this very good friendship and this connection and that it was pretty obvious that Kate should have been with Beck instead of Caleb and no one really understood why she was even with him. They weren't right for each other. And in this book, Caleb, the hero from book two, 
he was sort of villainized a lot in this book and I didn't I didn't love that but I wanted more of the connection and more of Kate and Beck's past and not necessarily being told how much like they were good together or they would have been good together and how much of a connection that they had I wanted more of that so I think I would have liked this to have flashbacks in it which I don't normally like that but I feel like this one I think it needed it and then the other thing Kate's character so I knew going into this book that I wasn't going to love Kate's character just because of what we got from book two but I was hoping that I would come to love her and that just never really happened for me I sympathize with her because she has not had a good life she's had a lot of things you know stacked against her she grew up in foster care and she lost her baby it's not wasn't a miscarriage I believe I think the baby got sick like something happened in the hospital right after she had her so that you know she spiraled after that she became a drug addict so she's been dealing with a lot and Kate doesn't really express her feelings very well like at all but then on the other hand she was just very selfish in her decisions she's so self-centered and the way that she was trying to go about getting Caleb back into her life she was literally like she would destroy anything anyone in her past or in in her path and I just I didn't like that and it almost felt like what growth that she got was forced upon her because Caleb didn't want her like that life was never going to happen so she just had to like well okay I guess I'll just move on really wanted to love this one and I'm very like I'm sad that I didn't but yeah three stars for this one but we are gonna end this video with a banger because the last book that I finished in January House of Flame and Shadow by Sarah J Mass. this is book three in the Crescent City series and I gave this five stars I freaking loved this book I loved everything about it every single thing about this book I loved like I I'm just I'm still so overwhelmed that I read this book and that this book is actually out in the world after waiting for two years two years too painful I'm being dramatic <laughs> but I waited a long time for this book okay so I was just mm, soaking it up okay soaking it up and I just oh I loved it I loved it loved it so that is all for my January wrap up let me know in the comments down below what your favorite read of January was if you've made it to this point in the video and you'd like to let me know leave me any flower emoji your favorite one whatever that may be thank you so much for watching please like comment and subscribe and I will see you next time